Welcome, everyone, to the only home in the entire world on the Pittsburgh Maulers, 365 days a year. Hammer time. I'm joined by Alex, my coach. What's going on, Alex? Glad to be here, Webb. And the man of the hour, Ed Rusher, D lineman. What do you want to be called, VT? Uh, you know, I'm pretty much plug and play player. You know, wherever they need me, that's why I play. All right, plug and play, Vaughn Taylor Jr. You doing all right? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm, I'm all right. Uh, cool. We're going to start with the Cowboys logo in the back. I know we were just talking off air before. Um, you're a Cowboy fan? This is a Pittsburgh yeah, show, Cowboys man. Cowboys fan, Cowboys fan, born and raised. I know it's odd to be banned from D.C., but you, know, you get a lot of those Cowboys, Eagles, Baltimore, stuff yeah. like that. Okay. What made you just born and born and raised a Cowboys fan? or? Uh, so I would say my uncle. My uncle was a Cowboys fan, and – uh, I pretty much learned everything about football through him, so that's pretty Makes much sense. how I grew up. Yep. Makes sense. So uh, we're going to go black and gold now. Steelers, you know, the old rivalry, but we're going to talk about the Maulers. How would you end up with the Maulers? Uh, um, like, what was, the, what was the whole process? I know you are signed last offseason. Yeah, so funny thing is, uh, I'm a big guy on keeping relationships, so I actually played my freshman year um, at the University of Kansas. So, you know, during my time out, uh, I had actually signed with the Albany Empire. Um, and then, you know, pretty much I was still wanting to play in one of the spring leagues. So I was still kind of reaching out to people. So I reached out to Bryce um, Trinadin and I sent him over my film. And then he actually sent the film over to, I think he maybe sent it over to Coach Horton. And then uh, Lonnie, everybody had seen it. They got back to me. and. You know, the rest is pretty much history. Man, seeing you with the number 56 and the last name Taylor, uh, all coming off the edge, man, like that just, that just, it just fit for me. It just, it just was awesome. Um, so I guess your surname uh, kind of helped you out a little bit there. It just, uh, number 56. Uh, why number 56? Uh, I actually didn't choose the number. The number chose okay. me. You know, so that's, what the available, <laughs> that's what the available number was. So I just went with you. And I'm not a, I'm not a guy that's really too big on the number. You know what I'm saying? I okay. feel like the player makes the number. So, so I pretty much, you know, took the number and I was good with it. Okay. Greatest. Who's the greatest quarterback you've ever sacked? Greatest quarterback I've ever sacked? The, the best quarterback. Or or maybe, you know what? We won't talk about the quarterback. What was the best sack you've ever had? For you best personally. Sack, best sack I've ever had. Uh, I'm not really sure if I have one that's higher than the other. You know, I, I think I pretty much value them all the same thing. So uh, right now, I don't have one that was my favorite. Uh, I pretty much just, a sack is a sack. You know, I, I love I love that sack. Your favorite's the next one, right? Ooh, Guess that was like my answer. It. Yeah, exactly. The next one. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to this past season, what was that click moment? Because you guys were struggling at the beginning of the season. Um, and then all of a sudden now, like you were losing games. When you were, were losing games, the offense was performing enough. The defense obviously was good. Um, every game was close. And then you guys got on that roll towards the end of the season where, like, outside of the Birmingham Stallions on that one night, no one could beat you. What was that click? Was there a moment that, like, stood out to you where you're just like, all right, we're good? I don't think it was one moment. I feel like um, every day we went to practice, we were just trying to keep the main thing the main thing. We pretty much uh, was – it was instilled in us from worst to first, you know, and even though we were on that uh, losing streak or whatever the case may be, not winning many games, we kept that in mind. And no one, no one in the locker room uh, had their hair down, thought negatively, anything like that. We all just built up around each other and we kept coming to work, kept coming to work. And then once we got on that road, I felt like nobody could stop us. Fair enough. Ed, and your production grew in the second half of the season. I was looking at your numbers and like you're, at, well, you're on the field a little bit more. And it, it, I don't know if that's just coincidence and not throwing anything. I'm just saying VT was on the field and uh, the team started to take off. So um, what was it like when, like, you, did you have a click moment where all of a sudden you understood the defense and you felt that your uh, role was growing? Uh, pretty much. I'm the type of player where I like to step in where I can and help the team. So uh, once Malcolm had went down, it was pretty much, I mean, it was on me and uh, Nasir, you know, we didn't really have a third guy uh, after he had went down for a little bit. So I just felt like once he went down, I just had to pull up the slack, um, you know, keep us rolling. I didn't want to be the weak link, you know, be playing more. So 
and I pretty much got to kind of like a train, you know, once I keep going and going and going, you know, it's, that's how I pretty much build my momentum during the season. Fair enough. XFL, USFL merger. You got any takes on it? You don't need to, we don't need no details if you know more details, but is the XFL and the USFL merger a good thing for the players? Your take. Uh, my, I'm kind of indifferent about it. I feel like the opportunity is an opportunity. Uh, as, long as, you, as long as you're able to play after college and, you know, be able to get paid to do what you love, I feel like it's a blessing. So for me, uh, whether they merge, whether they don't merge, you know, I'm pretty much good with either. As long as the Pittsburgh Maulers are playing, who cares, exactly. right? That's my main thing. <laughs> um, in college, did you play a 4-3 or 3-4? I played in pretty much everything. Uh, my freshman year at Kansas, we were a 4-3. On my way out, we changed it to a 3-4. Once I transferred to my school, Moorhead State, uh, we were a 4-3. We played in a 3-4 for one year, then we switched back to a 4-3. So I played in pretty much everything. every defense you can think of. Uh, the biggest difference for me, uh, you know, coming in with the models was just expanding my knowledge for coverages. Okay. What, do you think you feel fit better in a 4-3 or a 3-4? Uh, at first, I said uh, I was I love the 4-3 a lot, which I do. But I feel like now with our defenses, we run 3-4, we 4-3, run four, four, whatever it is. I feel like just me being able to show versatility, I feel like that's, that helps me the best. That's awesome. Alex, you got anything on the Maulers? Yeah, we were talking about, and, and Webb touched on a little bit, that run um, from last year to this year and what it meant to, you know, be that close to winning a championship. And we've talked about it a lot on the show. You know, we feel like we were very close to Birmingham. Birmingham just had one of those nights, uh, you know, the championship game. They they deserved it. They played very well, and their quarterback could do no wrong. That's going to happen. What would you say is the, like, in the locker room, like, after the game, obviously people are going to be let down, but sort of what the mindset was of the Maulers after, you know, coming up a little short in the championship game, what did that sort of do? You know, just get, bring us into that night a little bit, just sort of how people were feeling. I mean, like you said, guys were disappointed, you know, because we we had faith that, you know, we, we were going to win the whole thing. Um, but no one, no one really was, you know, too down about it. I feel like most guys were just like, you know, we had an opportunity. We really didn't make the most of it, but this is not happening again. Right. Right. It's also interesting for you to talk about like this, you know, there's been a lot of buzz around the merger and whether it's going to happen and what it's going to look like, this, that, another. And, you know, for me and being a spring football enthusiast, you know, I'd love to see uh, the merger done in a way that it sort of promotes spring football for the opportunities. The one thing at least that from my standpoint that I'm, not overly thrilled about is if there was a contraction in the number of teams that to me equals less opportunity for players maybe share your thoughts on you know am i thinking about it the right way or does it you know provide a better league with higher quality play um just your thoughts if you would uh, i agree with you on that uh when i first heard about the possibility of us losing teams uh, in spring football as a whole it was kind of a downer just because if you take away four teams that's possibly 200 guys that don't have the opportunity right. and put the trade on them and, you know, whatever they have to do, especially because right now I feel like everyone's in the blind about it. So you got guys right now just, you know, know anything thinking that, well, I may be on the team, might not be on the team. I feel like it's kind of a stressful period. But at the end of the day, you know, control the controllables. And right now it's something that we can't control. It's just about being ready when the opportunity presents itself uh, whenever that does happen. Yeah. That's right. Where you focus on what you can focus on and stuff is out of your control. You deal with it when it gets to your control. But um, no, I appreciate that perspective. All right, Vaughn, you ready to drop the hammer? Yep. All right, we're back with Drop of the Hammer. I'm going to say a couple of things. Word association. Give me the first thought that comes to your mind. Moorhead, Kentucky. Love it. Love it. Wow. All right. All right. What, what, what's the best thing about Moorhead, then? I've never been uh, there. Well, for me, I just felt like that was a place where I made a name for myself. Uh, and I was able to be one of the few players to come out of there in the last, I want to say, 10 years or so uh, to be able to play 
professionally. And two of us are actually in the spring league. One of us are playing in the CFL right now. Hey, Vaughn, can I piggyback off of that really quickly? Because that's one of the things that struck me. And then I'll let Webb go back to drop the hammer. Sorry to jump in on your fun here. But I noticed on your Twitter, and I noticed also on Moorhead's website, you seem to have stayed very close to the program and very active. Um, little insight. I mean, it, they must have left a real impression on you, and it's a good way for you to give back to the program. Just if you could give us some perspective on sort of that, staying close to the guys. Well, again, like I said, I'm a guy that's big on relationships. Uh, during my time at Moorhead, I always had a good relationship with all the coaches. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you can go around the campus and even talk to people along the campus, whether it be the camp or wherever, you know, they'll say, like, I was always a guy that, you know, show respect and whatnot. And for me, I just felt like it's always important to go back and show your face uh, as an alum. I do the same thing with my high school, my middle school, everything. Uh, I'm connected to all the programs I ever played at, so that's something that's real special to me, especially Moorhead, just because it's a small school. Not a lot of guys come out of Moorhead. A lot of people haven't heard of Moorhead, so to be able to accomplish the things that I have and my also my other teammates have, I feel like it's very important for me to go back and show guys that you don't have to enter the portal just because you go to a smaller school. It's possible to be able to play, and if it's meant for you to go to the next level from Moorhead or from Alabama or whatever it is, if it's meant for you to happen, and that was just my approach that I took, even when I transferred. I never entered the portal. I just said, whatever school works the best, works the fastest to get me so I don't have to sit out of here, that's the school I'll go to, and the rest will be on me. Back to Word Association, Rob. Rob Tainer. Tenor. Tenure. Tenure. Sorry, tenure. That's my right. guy. That's my That's guy. guy. Yeah. How, how did he convince you to end up at uh, Moorhead? Funny thing is, he didn't convince me. So I hadn't even talked to him prior to getting in there. Uh, we had another coach who was actually from D.C., and he kind of used his D.C. connection to Ruby in. But at the time, uh, my cousin, who I, I had actually went to high school with, he was actually playing that he had played as a true freshman there. So when I spoke with him, he was like, bro, you know, where if you leave, you can, you're always welcome to come here. And before I had even, you know, was really solidified on entering the portal or transferring, I should say, uh, he had already told the coaches, you know, like my cousin may be, you know, wanting to leave the school. So just have an eye out for him. Uh, best football movie. Best football movie? Yeah. The Blind Side. Hey. Blind Side, man. Alex, what's yours? I've never asked you. That's a good one. Oh, wow. Um, remember the Titans was pretty good. I'm a Virginia guy, and that was about some Virginia football. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Give me any given Sunday, man. Any, any given Sunday, Sunday, all the time. What's that's your favorite that's sports that's movie of all time, though? Best sports movie of all time. I'll take Play any ball. given Sunday. I love any given Sunday. And you know what the best part is? I interviewed Troy Williams, and I said, give me a player comp. This was before, and he gave me Willie Beeman. I, I kid you not. You can go back into YouTube. He told me he's Willie Beeman from any given Sunday. So, What's the best um, mo sports movie of all time, Vaughn, for you? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I actually, I would say, well, but that's not, I wouldn't say it's the best, but I, another one that I like would be The Longest Yard. Oh, yeah, the original one or the new one? The original one. Wow. Burnt Rolls, yeah. I got to go with Hoosiers. I mean, how can you not like Jimmy Chitwood, right? I mean, <laughs> he, they're going to run a play, and Jimmy's going to be a decoy, and then he tells them, I'll make it. I mean, and then he goes out and makes it. How can you not love Hoosiers? Huh. Vaughn, you're controlling the music on the practice field. What are the guys listening to you do? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, Young Thug, probably. Uh, okay. little baby. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's probably it right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're making a movie about your life. Who's starring as Vaughn Taylor? Starring as Vaughn Taylor. Uh, myself. I don't think no. But I, 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 I would rather just play it myself. You know, I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have anyone in mind that I think that would be. Hey, Web, you know, we ask those questions all the time, and the D line always says myself, except one, except one. Savian Williams said Michael B. Jordan. And I'll never forget that because I'm like, dude, there's no <laughs> cop there. There's no cop there. But I, all the I rest of the D line is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it myself. <laughs> That's true. 
All right, Alex is uh, getting you guys ready for Pittsburgh. Uh, we, of course, we don't know where the season's going to be, but we're getting ready. Uh, most of the guys have never been to Pittsburgh. Have you ever been to Pittsburgh? Well, and now it's time for Pittsburgh trivia with Alex. Uh, Alex is a Pittsburgh extraordinaire. We're trying to get you guys ready for when you guys actually are in the city of Pittsburgh. So, Alex, take it away. Thank you, Webb. So we'll take a little language lesson here. Can you tell me what the word yins means? Y-I-N-Z. Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> sure. That's, he's the first guy ever asked that. Are yins going out to eat? Are you going out to eat? Like, are you guys? Are you, oh, are you, y'all. Okay, gotcha. y- y'all. All right. Yep. Like I said, we just started this tonight. Webb gives out a hundred bucks for every correct answer. So you're a hundred bucks ahead. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Webb's gonna kill me for that. All right, so that's one. Here's another one. Question two. The Steelers and the Pirates shared a stadium back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s when the when the when the Pirates were winning World Series and the Steelers were winning Super Bowls. It sat on the Golden Triangle where the three rivers meet. What was the name of that stadium? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Three River Stadium. How about that? Wow. Okay. There you go. All right. Never forget it. All right. Two more. Two more. What is the nickname of Pittsburgh's National Hockey League team? The nickname? They have a nickname? They, the Pittsburgh... What's the hockey team's name? The Pirates, right? Baseball. Oh, Close. man. The Pittsburgh Penguins. Okay. Right, my All second answer right. was going to be the Ducks. That's good. Let's see your Ducks hockey. All right. Now, here, here's the bonus question. This will still get you 100% if you, can, if you can get this one right. What former University of Pittsburgh great is your teammate and is second all time at the University of Pittsburgh in football scoring. What? <laughs> Legendary. More than Marino. More than Dorset. I have no clue. That's sad. <laughs> they kick it through the uprights. Oh, but, Chris? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Chris blew it. Hey, you did fantastic. Thanks for thanks for playing along with the uh, trivia. Um, you did very well. <laughs> All right, back to football. I want to know about the three receptions that you had in college. Like, I see the sack numbers and everything, but the, the, the numbers that really jumped out was you had three catches, not just one, but three. And in one season, I think you had two in the same season. It's about three for, like, 14 yards, something like that. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make it. Uh, you look at defensive numbers, and all of a sudden, this guy's got three receptions. You know, it's not more than one trick play. Like, they, yeah, they've so, been designing stuff for you. Basically, that was my roommate. Me and my roommate were the same number, and his name was Devontae. My name was Vaughn. And they just gave me the receptions. Oh, is, my it, gosh. is that true? No, it's, it's true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're just messing with me. Oh wow! I don't wow, think I've ever heard of that. Because I, I was looking at it, I was like, "Man, he he, you know, to use your edge rusher, right? The guy that's yeah. getting nine and a half sacks a season, yeah. and, and trick plays is actually pretty cool, you know." Well, they would give me all of his stats, then. Hey, who knows? I, I thought we were gonna have to talk to the offense and be like, "We need to get him in a little bit too on the tight end, maybe." Yeah, I was a receiver in high school. Didn't work out much for him. So. <laughs> well, you know, we had a Isaiah Green May on the show, and uh-huh. I was watching some film on him, and he had picked up a fumble in, uh, when he was at Northern Illinois and ran it back about 70 yards for a touchdown. And, man, he was pulling away from dudes. And I asked him, I said, when you got back to the sidelines after taking it to the house, did you tell the offensive coordinator, you got to give me some carries? Yeah, I feel like all of us probably would want to be on the field at a tight end, get a pass, get a touchdown, something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so what made you go from D.C. to Lawrence, Kansas? Like that, That's that's a big switch for you. So culture, yeah, so culture-wise. It's, it's a long story. So long story short is I was committed to the Naval Academy. 
ended up figuring out that it wasn't a place for me. Uh, our defensive line coach, Jesse Williams, he was actually at Ohio University at the time uh, recruiting me. Um, and he ended up getting a job at Kansas, ended up going over to Kansas. Fair enough. Fair enough. What did you think of Lawrence, Kansas? Uh, I liked it there. I liked it there. It was pretty, it was pretty fun. Moorhead or Lawrence? What's a better town for you? Move with the correct answer. Moorhead. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> all right, Alex, your turn. Well, I have to ask you, I was reading an interview that you gave uh, as part of your um, scouting profile, and you mentioned Uncle Dupree, I think it was, mm -hmm. in the scouting. Yep. Can, seems like you were awfully close to him, um, and you mentioned even earlier in the interview that he had taught you or got you started in football. Why, could you share some thoughts on Uncle Dupree and your relationship with him and may, maybe – um, how his lessons affect you even today? Yeah, so my uncle Dupree, uh, so he actually was a nose tackle uh, when he played in high school, but, you know, he his career with football really didn't go too far. Um, and me and him, we actually bonded just through football, you know. So without my, my success up, to, up until this point isn't a surprise to me just because me and him, we used to talk all the time. And we'll, we didn't even compare, like, numbers. Like, if you want to be drafted or you want to be picked up, this person that came out this year that plays your position, he had these stats. So next year, or uh, you need to have these stats or you're on pace or you're not on pace. So we basically just used it and worked it as a numbers game for me to be able to get to where I am today. Unfortunately, he passed due to COVID, uh, around the time that COVID had happened. But uh, just the things that he told me as far as, you know, looking up who your competition is, Seeing where you, seeing where your numbers compare and whatnot, and trying to hone in on your craft while taking things from other people's games. Those lessons right there, I pre I feel like that's what helped me be successful, and really my work ethic as well. You know, I'm never satisfied with him. Uh, he didn't really give out too many compliments. Uh, so he would he would try to be funny, and he'll say like, let's say if I had a three side game or a two side game. He'll only talk about the times that I got that I missed the cycle, that I got pancaked, or whatever the case may be. So I never get too, high, never get too low. Yeah, keep it even. That's that's important yeah. to do that. So sort of along those lines too, like with younger players, um, you know, if you if you were going back to uh, DC and you're talking to some kids that are seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade kids, and just getting ready to start their high school career, maybe they have aspirations to play in college and beyond, like you did. What are a couple pieces of advice that you give these younger guys in terms of sort of what it takes or the right mindset? What would you tell them to focus on? I would tell them that it's cool to be you. You know, everyone doesn't have to be um, someone else or try to act like they're a tough guy just to be cool. It's cool to be who you are. And then as far as your work ethic, uh, just prepare for your blessing as if it's going to happen, even though you don't know when it will happen. And that's pretty much that, something that helped me up until this point. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, Vaughn, loved watching you play last year and absolutely thrilled about the prospects of, of, of 2024. Um, we've talked about how close we were. Um, you know, we just uh, excited. You know, April can't get here fast enough. Um, this is the part of the show, though. This is the end zone. We've reached the end zone, right? We're, we're on the two-yard line going in, and this is when we give you the floor to give a shout out to any cause, any uh, family, ex-coaches, whatever you'd like to say, the floor is yours. I'd like to just give a shout out to my defensive line. Uh, can't wait to see y'all boys, man. Love it. All right. Well, this has been Hammer Time. Vaughn, have a great rest of the offseason. We'll see you guys up in Cannes, Pittsburgh, whatever. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Vaughn. You.